Hey guys, it's Law in the Brain, and this is the final whistle. Hello and welcome back to the final whistle brought to you by the Rugby Connection podcast. Well, if you can't tell by the jerseys I've got on, we're back with my boyhood club, Edinburgh Juggernaut. He's been at the Tigers, he's been at the Cheetahs, he loves his animals, he's been a baby bot. It's Lewin De Bruyne. Lewin, thank you so much for coming on, mate. How are you getting on? Oh, Murray, thanks for having me, man. It's a, it's a pleasure and it's an honour. Um, I'm getting on a ride, man. It's turning, it's turning winter now with the autumn and the temperature dropping a bit. So it's getting quite chilly. And uh, it's not my favourite season of the year. You do play better rugby than it. But um, it's nice. I do enjoy the different colours of the season. Yeah, exactly. It's always, it's always fun. Um, first question that we just ask all our guests, just to get the ball rolling. What actually got you into rugby in the first place? So like way back when? Man, that's a really good, like, that's, I always get that question a lot of times. Like, so my dad used to play, like, semi-pro and a bit of, like, amateur rugby. So I basically okay. just grew up with it. Like, my mom and dad, my dad used to be a cop and my mom is still a, a, still a ICU nurse. So they worked, like, shifts and, and if she was working and he was training rugby at night and, like, obviously we had to be somewhere. So we just went for, for it. We just grew up next to the pitch, literally next to the pitch, my sister, myself. We grew up next to the pitch and just like fell in love with it. It's, it's all I've known. Like, I know this since I was a little boy. It's all I know. I love that. That's good. I'm actually very glad that you've mentioned the police very early because we've been given a question sent in. I'm, I'll let you guess first and then I'll tell you who it's from. So it says, Hi, Lewin. Do you remember me from the police rugby days? Um. I probably won't remember who it is, though. It's but from like Ste- say, uh, Stephen Steenkamp. Stephen Steenkamp. No, it doesn't sound familiar. Like I was like a really young boy, so basically I grew up with all those lads and and grew up. And then when I was sixty, my dad like he said to me, "Listen, you can play for them if you want to." Yeah. And as a sixteen-year-old boy, I was like, "I'm really keen," and he just put me in the third team and with a bunch of grown-ass men, and it was just like really, really. <laughs> there was a. <laughs> A big eye opener. As soon as the first punches fell, and obviously it's, it's amateur rugby. I was like looking at him, and he was like, "Well, you sort it out. You're on the pitch. I'm not on the pitch." So I probably I can't if I see a picture. Probably yes. Yeah. But like I've met so many so many lads and so many people and men with my time with my dad at the club. It's just like basically it's just it's all I've been known. Like I've been there my entire life. So I see people come and go all the time. But if you show me a picture, yes, I would like. I'll send you a picture and, after. I'll send you. I'll try and yeah, send you a picture after. Salad, Just because it, it came through, so I love I love questions like that when they when they know you personally. Exactly. It's just, but I don't remember him. if I know a picture. Maybe, yeah. Nah, that's, that's fair enough. Um, obviously, like I mentioned it during our intro, that you've played you've played in Super Rugby with the Cheetahs, you've played Premiership Rugby with the Lesser Tigers, and obviously now you're at Edinburgh in the URC. What's the biggest um, difference in styles across the leagues? Mm, that's a really good question, actually. Um, I think the Super Up is a bit more fluent, if you, if you get what I mean. Like, it's more fast-paced, tricky offloads, um, more one-on-one tackles. It's not like that slow and physical, I would say. There is still a physical game, don't get me wrong. Yeah, of course. Um, but I think the URC and the Premiership are really similar. It's more uh, northern... Norman, Norman, Northern Hemisphere game and um, honestly I think it's more forwards oriented as well like you do get the backs with the flair and all the skills and physical backs as well like yeah. but um, I think that's the main difference for me like you could almost feel the pace of like a difference in pace yeah that's fair oh, I, I kind of get what you're saying because Super Rugby is, is just flat out for the whole yeah. time whereas it is like the North South divide that we we like a more kicking Based game up here than than running it, but maybe, maybe not with Edinburgh. You boys love a good run. Yeah, we do do like a good run, but like there's a time and place for, for kicking in game always. Like the the people should obviously, and I do hope they get it one day. Like there's a there's a place for kicking, and the the reason why we kick and the reason why teams kick. It's always like if you go through comments, especially if you watch the the spring box or whatever, and like yeah, but why do they kick the ball away? Why? Why? And it's like like it's just a chance for pressure and. Yeah, sometimes you get a shit kick or sometimes you get a shit chase. But, like, that's down to the individual. But yeah. there's a place for it in rugby. I do get it. 
And I'm, I'm loving the insight. I love that you, you obviously you did grow up by a rugby pitch, so you know all the ins and outs and why teams do that and why they won't do this. But yeah. no, I'm loving it. I love people that are passionate about rugby. That's no, definitely. I have to be honest. Like it is a big passion of mine. I probably, I'm not sure if I'll coach one day. I'd love to be like part of. I wouldn't say coaching team, but I'd like to do some scrums and and I wouldn't say breakdowns, but more the contact part around breakdowns. The okay. bit. That's all right. But I wouldn't say coaching. I'm not sure. My patience is too. It's not. It's not all the way there to be a head coach or a coach even. Never say never, though. Yeah, true, true. You get older, <laughs> you get wiser. Um, just a little side question from the last time I seen you. How's how's the nose? The nose. Was it the nose? I can't remember if it was no. the nose oh, against the, the lions. Oh, oh, the lions. Oh, it was the concussion. Oh, it was a concussion. How how yeah, you yeah, offered? Yeah, so, no, we're good. I've passed all the all the protocols, the RB protocols, and like nowadays, so many protocols. But I do get it, player safety, obviously. So, but all good. Like honestly, feel good. No issues. Also, awesome. I think it was just like in the moment. I had a couple of questions wrong on the HIA, and I think I probably wouldn't get them on a good day as well. Remember <sighs> ten words. And it's just like numbers and reverse. Come on, please. Let's be honest about this. Could you give us a little bit of uh, insight about a HIA test? Because not many. People know what actually has to happen. So obviously, after a couple of head knocks or one major one, the the docking can pull you. The ref can tell you they can pull you as well for yeah. HIA. So you go off and you go to a little medical room on the side of the pitch, and then they start feeling you, asking you questions: Are you feeling? Do you have headache? Nausea? Like, does the noise bother you? Um, bright lights, all that like just the normal type of stuff. And then as soon as you you've done that. They start going into more detail, like giving you like 10 words to remember. And then you have to repeat the 10 words to them three times. Um, and then they tell you to remember those words because you're going to repeat them later again. And then you go on about that. And then there's numbers and like they give you three numbers and like in between the three numbers. And then they give you four numbers and give them reverse and then five and six numbers. And so they go on, I think six the most, but like, and then they tell you, listen quickly, the 10 words again. So like you do, like it's a bit of a test and then you have balance. Um, and I think that's about it, balance. And yeah, I think that's it. If you if you do pause all those things, like there's a certain criteria for you to pause it. Okay. And I think, unfortunately, I did not pass my, I couldn't remember all 10 words. Like yeah, there's always like the one or two words you always miss, like always. I think, and I just, in that moment, I was so like in a rush to get back on the pitch and just get it done with and, yeah, I wouldn't say you're, you're rushing it like through it, but like it's just adrenaline's pumping. You want to get back on the pitch when like oh, before so. you get called, and so it's a lot of stuff. But it's 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 good. It's good for the for the player welfare nowadays. Like I think the sport is getting to a place where it's really the impact is ridiculous, and yeah. like you have to look after the players. You have to because someday after rugby, we still have to live a life as well. Of course, of course, hundred percent. That was a big. That was always a big question, not just to you, but. You get like the older generation, like, oh, the game's gone soft. It's not. They're bigger, they're faster, they're stronger, they're going to come at you a lot harder in yeah. ways <clears throat> they probably wouldn't have been hit. Yeah. Especially with 3G pitches or the 4G pitches nowadays, like the yes. acceleration is just so much quicker. The collisions are so much bigger on, on the 4Gs. It's ridiculous. Are you a fan of the 4G pitch? I know that not everyone is. <sighs> Mate, I'd say I like playing on them, yes. Not always training. Like sometimes for the big boys, the heavy boys, like your knees get like hammered, your ankles are sore and stuff, your your hips and your joints are just taking a beating. And sometimes that is just like just nausea on the off day, like you feel it, and then you get back Thursday, it's good, and then you start training again. It's just like all over again. But I do like I do get why we have them. Yeah. I like the hybrids are good. I do like the hybrids. Like Zebra has a hybrid. Yeah, that's all right. But the 4G's uh, not a I, honestly, I, I don't mind. I like playing on them. You feel so like so much quicker and more reactive on them, though. It's like little bouncy okay. balls. Yeah, you just see the. I do. You do notice that the bounce is a bit more unpredictable. Yeah, shall we say? Um, you were involved in a very special game when the world was almost coming to us. You know, you were in the Springbok showdown, and you represented yes. Springbok Green. Could you talk to us about? Basically, all that whole experience and yeah. So for those that obviously don't know, like it was a 
it was the almost like the north south i think they had it in new zealand as well i'm not sure if they all yeah. like you guys had one in, in the uk i'm not sure you guys had one no like we that. didn't we weren't lucky enough to get that <laughs> no, unfortunately. <laughs> but like New Zealand had a north south as well, and it was basically just a north south. But oh, goodness, sorry. <laughs> so good. Thing just fell over. Can you believe that? No, it's not um, good. Yeah, it's fine. So um, it was basically just a north south game. Only thing is, they didn't divide into north south. They just picked two teams, random teams from a random draw. Okay. And then. Like they gave each Springbok coach, they gave the one to Jock Nobert. I think the other one, I can't remember who was the other one. But I think like, it was Razi. I think it was Razi Erasmus. It might be because he wasn't there, but he, I remember he was sick at that moment. He was okay. sick. So, but like, doesn't matter. But like, and that was basically just that. And, and we had camp, we got together on a Sunday and had a full week of training and obviously all the challenges COVID as well. And so we had that and sleeping in your own in the room was quite tough as well. Mm, like, yeah. you, you, couldn't, you couldn't mingle like normal. It was a normal team set up where you could have friends in your room or go to your friend's room or go out and have a good coffee and have a good chat. So it was, it was challenging in, in a way. But yet again, really big privilege because the rest of the world was in lockdown and you could have your work and you could do your job. But the experience around it was really great. Like, Obviously, playing at the Cheetahs, you played with guys like Luet and, and all those boys and Trevor. And, and playing with them is something else again, because you haven't played with them in such a long time. The yeah. experience is through the roof. And, and playing with guys like Bongi and, and Kutsov and all those guys against them as well. It's just, it's, it's unreal. Like, Dwayne Vermeer and the calmness he brings to, like, almost a pack of forwards. It's ridiculous. Like, yeah. it's crazy. I did, I, did see, I did have a quick uh, glance over the the squad and like the team you were on had like Dwayne Vermal and like you said Ellen Yanchi's on it and I'm just like that's a, that's a Springbok side up pretty much yeah it was a really good team like I think we had in the loose head I can't remember who was in the loose head I think it might be Ox but um and Ox and two of us at tour if I'm not mistaken but we had Bongi in the, in the middle and like we had uh, Lewitt and Lewitt obviously just came for the for the lineups and, and he got injured and all this stuff. So it was really like it was it was class. I didn't enjoy that. It does, so like sound, it really does sound fantastic. If only there was a crowd to see it, it would have been better. And that was one of the the many, many last games that was supposed to be played on Newlands. And yeah. So I like I was really fortunate. I said to somebody the other day, I was really fortunate enough to play two of the of the many last games on Newlands. So every week they would represent that no, this is the last one in New Zealand. The last awesome, one. Yeah. So I, yeah. So with the Cheetos, we played just literally just before I came over, we played the Stormers um on New Zealand's, and that was supposed to be the last one. And then the week <laughs> after they had another game, and then they said, Okay, that's the last one done now. And then the, the North South thing happened, and then they were like, Yeah, that's the last one. And I think that was actually the last one. So you did defo. There you go. So you definitely yeah, played on the last one. Or we'll just tell people that you did. No, they would know. So many last games. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> um, we're going to stick with the front row theme. Who is your dream front row partners, past and present? You don't have to have played with them, but who's your loose head and who's your hooker? Obviously, you'll be starting at tight head. I tight head, man. I can start loose head as well. Um, I'd say... Oh, I'm not loose... sure. You could pick then. Yeah, yeah, man. I don't mind, honestly. Like, the time at Leicester, <laughs> the, time at Leicester the first one was quite a curveball. Um, like Steve really threw me from a curveball. Like I was, I was dumbstruck when he said it to me, and I was just like, "I'll tell you the entire story about that now." It's just ridiculous. So I don't have if I'm going tarted. Oh man, I definitely it's between Scummy or Alice Gange on the list. Oh, I like that. Right. I like that. Yeah, like both really physical, two warheads, um, good scrummages, great ball carriers, defensively sound. Great blokes as well. And then yes. who, who, goes, who goes a tight one? Like, honestly, if I have to go for a mate, I'd probably go either Julian Montoya or Malcolm Marks. Mongi himself is not bad as well. And then, like, obviously, I play with him as well. So, but not yeah, just that. R- Rambo is, Rambo is, mate, Rambo. one of the best hookers I've played with in my life. Like, he's up there. He's top five. Like, all those lads on the hooker, he's, he's one of them in the top five easily. Yeah, that's, that's fair. I've got a side question there, just because you've mentioned them, and I've ha- I have asked some of the Edinburgh boys this. Do I look like Rambo? That's a running joke. I don't think I do. What do you, what do, what do you mean? 
apparently I look exactly like Stuart. Me and Stuart look alike. Yeah, close. Like if Rambo, like, yeah, a little bit. I do get it a little <laughs> bit. I think if you like your hair was a bit more curly and a bit more loosely, I think I'd say so. But like, Unless yeah, not too Yeah, close enough. No, like, I can see the re- resemblance. Like, it is, it's a fair point. Oh, okay. I'll just, I'm just, I might just own it now because everyone keeps saying that I do. So, I'm, and I keep saying I, that I don't. Give yourself a nickname, Rambo. Come on. I'll, I'll need to get a picture. Just me and, me and Rambo, just like, there we go, twins. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm a double ganger. Exactly. <laughs> um, Gemma, one of our co hosts, has asked, What was the best advice you were ever given? Mm. Oh, um, it was like obviously it sounds cliche, but like be the hardest work in the room, like nobody's gonna, nobody's gonna do the work for you. Like, yes, get up, get up, get off the ground, start running, get up in the morning, go to the gym, do your stuff get up, nobody's going to do it for you. And like, that was one of my cheetah coaches who said that. And it's just like, it's always been with me, like be the hardest work in the room. Just doesn't matter what you do. If it's, if you are washing dishes, mate, be the best dishwasher ever. Like, it yeah, doesn't matter no, what you true. do. Yeah, I like that. And, and, and it does sound cliche, but like, it just stuck with me. And like, I think I was like probably 24 when he said that to me. And like, oh. I've always remembered, literally, I've always remembered it. Never forgot it. I love that. Is there any advice you have for like young people wanting to become a prop and stick at it? Because prop's not prop's not really anyone's go-to position growing up. You kind of get chucked nah. in. Yeah. See the little the little round boy with the short st- stocky legs. That's in your prop. That's basically yeah. what what it, what it comes down to. Um, I just say probably be patient. Like like it's difficult. I can't explain in English. Like you have to pay your school fees. You have to, you have to earn the right. Like you're gonna get dished up week after week. Like first couple of years, it's it's always a, it's a learning curve. Like be patient and stick to the basics. And like your core is more important than you think. Like your core is really really important in scrummaging. And never ever like I would say put that on a back burner. Say listen, I'm gonna do biceps and triceps or chest today, and and do my core tomorrow. Like. Mate, for scrummaging, your call is the first thing you do every day. And I, I tend to do my call every every day. Well, that's fair. No, that's fair. I, I totally agree with that. Final question before we move on to something a little different. It's from Cam. He's our other co-host. He's yeah. actually from, I'm going to probably pronounce this wrong, but he's from Nelspruit. Nelspruit, yes. Yeah. So he's asked, who is your favourite Edinburgh bocker? My favourite Edinburgh? Bocker, who's your favourite South African Edinburgh player? Oh, yeah, obviously Scooby. Like, me and me and, me and Piero, and I think Piero's like, he's the crowd favourite as well. He's a, the people's champion. He's, but not just for the reason that, like, me and Piero, we've, we've been like, I would not say grew, grew up together, but basically grew up together. Like, he's a year younger than I am. We were in the same school. Um, we played first team together for our school, and... We played a bit of like national, you know, Craven Week back home together. And so we like, I would say somebody else's other we were like brothers. They said we were like brothers. And and they said, yeah, I'm always the older one. Like he's always busy or something. And I'm always the, the the bit more logical one, always busy as well, but sensible in that case. But so no, me and Scooby get along well. Like we feed off each other's energy as well. And I love playing with him. Like honestly, we can feed off each other's energy. If, if, if he sees me getting pissed off on the pitch, he's pissed off or whatever. Like if there's a big hit and, He's just like, yeah, let's go again. And and I do love him too, but he's a good man as well. Off the pitch. He is. He is. And he's actually my little boy's favourite as well. Exactly. No, he's, only, he's, only, he's only two, so but he always now he's at that age now, like you'll see like highlights on, on YouTube or and he's like, Where's Shui? And I'm like, Yeah. He's busy, he's working. Yeah, but there's a reason why he's, why he's a people's people's champion. Like honestly, like he's a good bloke. He he yes. does his, his part. Like you can always see him after the match, standing outside, almost an hour, hour and a half, signing signatures, taking pictures, and and like sometimes you do you do like most people do it, but sometimes like there's nobody to sign and nobody's asking you. And you just like you walk off. Here's what it is. Yeah, but like mate, he's just so he's so outgoing and he's like rather so. Listen, can I sign that for you? And and, and he'll just keep on and. That's why he's like so love. He's a good man. Well, well, but you're uh, to me. You're the same because you you 
talk to everyone and well, based on me, you you sat and talked to me yeah. for quite a bit as well. So, it's difficult. Like, yeah, I'd say that as well. Like, but sometimes like it's difficult. You can't spend five minutes talking to everybody. If you send spend no, no, five minutes talking to everybody, it's like you're going to be there all night. And and sometimes you do like I'd say sometimes you slack a bit, and especially after a loss, sometimes it's just like you yeah. tell the people thank you for coming and. And appreciate the support, and you sign a couple of signatures. But some, especially if it's not hard enough, man, come on. Of course. If you if you lose by one point, this is tough. And and I think sometimes that's the best thing is people always, I'd say, get into into players' characters and and the way they play and stuff. And I think that people should probably remember that we are our biggest and our hardest critics as well. Yes. So you know, you know, if you have a shit game, like you know it. You know, if you had three or four slip tackles, you know yeah. that. Like, you don't need, I don't need you to tell me that because I know it. And, you know, it's the worst part. So now I'm not going to sleep because I'm going to watch the highlights or I'm going to watch the game again. And it's going to haunt me until Monday because it is what it is. It's done yeah. now. Let's move on and fix it. So, but fair enough. It's not always fair to the crowd as well because they pay good money to come out and support us and watch us. So, But like, yeah, I try to. Sometimes I do slack on it because, like I said, my patience isn't, the biggest of my attributes or my best oh, yeah. attributes. So so I'd rather just walk in and, and not be a, a sour guy out of the crowd and fake it. I'd rather just leave. I'm one of those guys. I'd rather be real and, and say, you know what, listen, thank you guys and sign a couple of signatures and just get out of there. Well, no, that's fair. I mean, you've done nothing wrong with me. We're friends. You're stuck. You're, we talk all the time, so it's, it's all good. Um, yeah, so we're going to go into a different part of the show now. It's getting to know so it's more just about you there's not really much rugby based yeah so what is your favourite post-match drink mm -hmm. I think not to drink the first couple of hours of the game I'd say like the first hour hour and a half unless okay. it's really unless we really beat Glasgow for the 1872 Cup game yes I'll have a beer afterwards but a normal one, I'd have my shake afterwards and, and drink my vitamins and, and get all the fluids in I need. Because That's recovery is fair. But the first thing I'd probably have as soon as it's available is a pint of Guinness. Oh, good choice. Oh, yes. Yeah. Solid choice. I love that. That I heard it's now. It's one of the superfoods of the world. So come on. Let's, let's get <laughs> yes, on. <laughs> yes. Would you rather play in a Friday night lights or like Saturday afternoon? Hmm. Um, that's a good question. I'd say Friday night lights because I like the late game. The late games don't bother me. Sometimes, like you are aching to get out there, but it's just easy. Get up in the morning, have a chill morning, have a big breakfast, walk about, go out for a stroll, see a couple of mates for coffee or two, do some stuff around the house, and then you start getting to your thing, getting your art music up or whatever you do to get you up, and just ease into it. It's uh, like I don't tend to be like to like be rushed. So I just tend to take my time. Like just ease it out. Put put some good music on, pack my bags, go through my plays, watch a couple of clips, and just be in my own head. Yeah, no, I like that. Um what's your what's your go-to for the big breakfast? What what what's involved in your breakfast? Oh man, I'd probably have a little bit of oats, a little bit, not too much, just for the for the carbs. And yeah. then put some milk and Butter in, a little bit of honey, and then I'd have a couple of eggs, a bit of bacon, a bit of beans, and some toast. Nice, simple. Yeah, nothing wrong yeah, with that. Yeah, easy. Yeah, it's good. Have you had, have you had haggis yet? And do you yes, like I've, had, I've had it a couple of times. I'd say it's not my favorite thing to have. Like, if, so, if, if that, that's all it is, if, if there's only that on the table, I'll eat it. But I, I would go to a, to a pub or whatever and have some Agus balls or have some Agus and whatever. Like, it's not my favorite thing to have. Like, <laughs> I've tried it. Like, so since we got to Edinburgh in 2016 for our first, um, Pro 14 then tour, like, yeah. I've tried it. Like, I'm a big fan of the country you go to, you have what they offer to drink and you have what they have. Like, I yeah. tried it. I wasn't a fan. I gave it a couple of years' time and then I tried it again. Like, it was, open to it again, and then, uh, it's all right. I must say, I had a sandwich the other day, or last Christmas, was haggis, turkey, brie, and cranberry. And, mm. like, really surprising, not too bad at all. Fair, fair enough. 
So, what, so what's your thoughts on whiskey then? Man, do love it. Like <laughs> even before, even even before I came to to the UK and Scotland, it's like I've always had like other whiskey neat or whiskey with better water, whiskey with like, some soda water and a bit of lime, whatever. It's always yeah. had it. It's just good. Fair enough. Any specific brands or just any? <laughs> Uh, it was between either Johnny Walker Black Label or the Jameson. If you Man have a choice. Class. Man of class, there you go. <laughs> try to, try to. Um, cats or dogs? Dogs. I don't like cats. Nobody's, uh, nobody answers cats, but I'll keep it in just because it's interesting. Oh, well, I'll, I'll beat them. I'll play with them. And obviously, they don't like playing with me because I play too rough, but it's just like, I don't know. It just feels like I can't trust them. Dogs are better. Dogs are better. Yeah, they are. Any specific? Do- I don't like little dogs. I like. I'd say dog. I like big dogs. I like all dogs. Like I wouldn't mind. I'm not a big fan of like like a poodle or something like that. Cockapoos are cute. I'll I'll love those. But like a, sure. like a poodle is not just. I'm not sure. It's just they normally just weird dogs. I don't like them. Um, I do like all the things with like a flat noses, like <laughs> bugs or Frenchies or Boston's. I love an English bull. Just okay. birds, man. Those are amazing. It's 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 lovely creatures. Um, but yeah, boxes, amazing dogs. Good. Quite stupid by the look. I've never seen an intelligent boxer. They're all no wired to the moon. Yeah, and so <laughs> hyper. The, them in Boston Terriers, ridiculous. Yeah. Wildly crazy. What is your favorite film? My that's a really tough one. Um I don't some I'm a big Film man, I do love love to watch a couple of movies. I'd mm. say, and my mom would probably, if she was here, probably be shouting from the back. I'd say Saving Private Ryan. It's 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 quite gruesome and stuff, but like one of my best films. It's a classic. Just, it's a classic. Yeah, I do I do enjoy a bit of the the history like like around World War Two and the invasion and and all the tactics around it. It's just do enjoy it really. Hi. So, it's just that's why. No, that's just a really valid reason. What is your favorite song or uh, style of music? Oh man, that's a really like now you now you're pushing it. So if you if, if, if you have yeah if you have to go into my Spotify, mate, you're gonna be like, what is this going to? Like <laughs> anything goes, anything with a beat goes. Sometimes you catch me listening to some classic music in the mornings or late at night, and then game day you'd be what is he summoning? Like really dark music. <laughs> And then bit of rap, hip hop, bit of pop. I don't like. I listen to anything. Like depends on the mood. I like I, honestly, I can't say. I do like the old classics like Motley Crue and Nirvana, all those kind of things. Like nice. it's amazing. Yeah. To be fair, my music taste is very varied as well. So like, I like, yeah. like I like Motley Crue, but I also like Shania Twain. So yeah, <laughs> big, di- like, big difference there. But it is. But like. That's the thing. It's like I have playlists for everything. I have a gym playlist, which is just rock. I have a gym playlist, which is just a combo of everything. Yeah. No. So you you have need, those things. You need a variety. You can't have the same style of music all the time. No, otherwise you'd be ripping heads off in the gym. <laughs> yeah. Basically. Pretty much. Um, do you have any tattoos? Yes, I do have the, I have the sleeve. Uh, I have a crown on my chest and a cross on my arm. Basically. Nice. Still have to go finish the sleeve. Um, I haven't gotten to do that in a while now because you don't normally have. You do need a couple of weeks off for that. So. I should have probably, now. <laughs> yeah, ten days not enough. That's the thing. It's like nice. all about the the recovery process afterwards. So I'll probably go maybe June July next year if I have yeah. the time. I'd love to go home next year June July. So I didn't go home this summer break with my um, torn hamstring. So I had to do my rehab and. And get fit because that was that crucial part where I just started to run and and almost like put a lot of strain on it. And that yes. was just before like if I if I postponed that I'll probably only start playing now. Wow. Crazy. So just like yeah. So I just said listen, I'll I'll offer my summer and stay home and just crack on. I think crazy. I had five days off. Yeah. Jeez, that's crazy. Yeah. But it's all right. Like honestly it's it's still if you have the off days but you went in to do your rehab, your gym, your strength. And yeah. then obviously conditioning. So it was it was a good time. Like one of the there was a couple of boys in all the injured boys, young boys. It was good to like to get to know them as well. Like it's just different. Like if you take the young guys, Marty Jones, Finn Douglas, Finley Douglas, all those lads, it's good guys. 
Good. Glad. So what? What you? Fin- what's the sleeve on your? What are you getting? What are you finishing off? Um, I'm not sure. That's the thing. I'm honestly not sure because I like. I tend to shy away from whatever is getting the rose or the map or the compass, or like anything like that. I, I I tend to shy away from it. What do you? I don't have any of that. I don't have any of that. Uh, so. Okay, but like still fair. <laughs> like it's still beautiful. Like it's it's odd, honestly. And I yeah, of course. Enjoy, like, but what I have now is the is a lot else on my arm um, with a massive storm, and it's just like I like it, and it's just re- resemblance like hope and strength and just yeah. like be a beacon of hope, basically. But um, I'm not sure. I've, it's I've been pondering about this for a long time now. I'm not sure what I want to finish it off with. The guy do I go to in Bloemfontein, he's really good, and normally I'll tell him like what I have in mind and he'll just design something and he'll send yeah. it over and he'll be like, listen, let this work for you. And we can tweak it while we're going as well. And he's just, he's just great. That's good. <laughs> Get my face on your arm. <laughs> no, I probably don't get any faces on my arms or anything like that. That's that's just my name then. Yeah, we can we can decide. <laughs> it's all good. Um, favorite style of food oh. or cuisine, whatever you want to call it. Man, I'm such a foodie. Actually, like, um, big big passion for food, making it, cooking it, eating it, everything. Um, I'd say Italian is really good. I do enjoy it. Good pasta. Uh, yeah. Capri, Capri salad. Uh, goodness. What else? I love Mediterranean. I love seafood. I oh, love oh, it. I'm not yeah. a fan of it. I don't Why? like food. I don't know. I've got this weird thing with seafood that if, it's, if it comes out of the water, I don't want any of it. I do get that as well. But nothing like comes to a good steak as well. Let's, let's be honest about that. Proper steak, oh, well cooked. Yeah. 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 And I tried some South African. Well, I said it was South African. It was from a supermarket here, though. Yeah, yeah. I said it was built. Said it was built on sausages, but that was very nice. Was it in a package or pre packed? It was pre packed, but it had a uh, had a picture of CJ Stander on it. <laughs> oh, uh, it's a, it's a, what do you call it? It's the Helbing guys. I know them. Like yeah, the one yeah. owner used to play with us in the Cheetos. Yeah, he's he's in Ulster now. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. I like so that. that. Yeah, it's good. That's the, like it's sausage, really good, traditional. Yeah, I like that. Does uh, what's what's your favorite pizza topping? Mate, I love the classic pepperoni, um, cheese, bit of like afterwards comes off, bit of like um, chili olive oil, a little bit. Oh, nice. Really yeah. Good. Let's just, just just a little. Yeah, a little bit of like a little bit of tang, just a little bit. Nothing, nothing beats that. No, does, pineapple, really... does pineapple belong on pizza? Some people would probably call me no bias, but sometimes yes and sometimes no. Like it's one of those days I do get the feeling that I'm in the mood for it. And I would yeah. honestly be like, listen, I'd have a wine pizza. That's just I'll have it. That's fair. And then some some days I'm just like, listen, give me something else, pepperoni, gorgonzola, and then I'm happy. Ooh, gorgonzola on a pizza. No. Gorgonzola on a pizza, pepperoni, spicy. I promise you, world class. I'm going to learn for pizza. That's what's happening here. I'm... Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Sold. sold. Um, what's your favorite dessert? If, if it's tough, you could do top five. You could do top five if it's, if it's tricky. Mm, let's see. Cream brulee. Nice, really good carrot cake. Mm. Really good, love a carrot cake. And then chocolate puddings always like you can so, get away with a, like a like a well, it's those malted lava pudding cups always. Yeah, yeah. Those like always good. Cake, yeah. Yeah. yeah, those are good. And then something we have back home traditional, they call it a milk tart, milk tart. Um it's like it's basically mold of my my uh, um of milk and I think cornstarch. But like it's, it's difficult to explain. Like it's just a bit of cinnamon on top. Okay, it's really good. It's proper South African. It's like traditional. I, I, I'll have a look at it. That sounds quite nice. I'll get I'll get you one as soon as the South African guy is back in um, in Edinburgh. There's one guy who does it. Nice. I like that. Yeah, I'll get you one. I look I look forward to that. Um, sunset or sunrise. Ooh. Much stuff. Even though we get neither of them. Yeah, sun, sun, <laughs> sunrise. I do get like a good sunrise. Start a new day. Why not? 
Yeah. Who is your favourite opponent? It could be player or team, or both. Um, I always like playing against uh, Oxenche. It's always nice. a good laugh. It's always like a little comment, a side commentary while we're playing or scrummaging. And then, like, really good scrummaging, right? Incredibly strong. Um, but, like, it's always good fun. Like, always going at each other, a little bit of comments and push and pull and shove. And so, definitely him. But same, like, can play with him as well. Great guy. Yeah. Really good guy. Good player as well. Adam Rodelstein. Yeah, exactly. And then <laughs> I have to say, team, I'd probably say Ulster is always like that. You talk about Pro 14 or you or she. Ulster is always a physical match, always good, physical. The Italian side's always tough. Man. Come on, let's be honest. Like, yes, that's fair. You know what you're getting and, and you just have to deal with it. It's going to be a physical day at the office, basically. Yeah, South African teams. I've not since the South African boys came across and joined the league. When those games are on their health, is good. Like I spoke to you after the Lions game, and yeah. there's blood all over your nose. I got told I got told that you were bitten. Glenn told me that. Well, that I was bad, bitten. Yeah, he said that you got yeah. bitten, but I was like, I just yeah, spoke I to him and mentioned nothing. All my days. Yeah, it's just starting to grow out another nail. Guy bit me on the nail, but they couldn't see on the on the footage who it was, so they huh? didn't cite him. But like. Because we were falling over over the over the, the trial line in the mall, and I was just trying to pull people over. And as I fell, I like accidentally with this guy in the mouth, and I'm yeah. trying to pull my finger out of his mouth, and he just started biting, and he just went to town, literally went to town. And I was like, I don't think it's going to be that bad. And I looked up, and I saw my nail. My nail was cracked right through, but through my nail, it was just bleeding, it was just pissing blood. Did you not get taught at school not to bite? <laughs> no man, I was I, like, I probably if I knew it was, I'd probably just kick him in the face. No man, but <laughs> I won't do that. But yeah, like no. So it's it's obviously it's 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 not a good thing. It's not really like sportsmanship as well. So oh, I just I knew it was a physical game because obviously I was there. It was just yeah. like we, we spoke to you and like there was no there was blood on your nose and off your lips or something. And I thought, okay, he's, he's had a little bit of a rough few yeah. scrapes but then you went past into the change rooms Glenn came past and Glenn's got the big gash down the side of his face and I was like oh you alright and he was like I'm alright some of our lads got bit and I was like who's, who was who was bit and he was like Lou and I was like I've just spoke to him and he mentioned nothing <laughs> no obviously you like, you don't really walk around and say it but like yeah it's like oh. it's alright like South African teams are always physical and, and I yeah. think for the South Africans this side and they come over, you almost, I don't say like you, you gun them, but you feel always like obligated to, to lead the pack and lead the team in physicality yes. and, and, and and assert the dominance because like these are your countrymen and you know what they bring. Like if the South African okay. teams come over, you know what's coming. Like it is what it is. And and then as follows Af- fellow South Africans is, you know, listen, mate, you still got to lead from the front. And that is what it is. And I think games like that is just, it's just, it's just a battle. It's just, it is what it is. Like, That's fair. That's fair. And you will get your little uh, running commentary with Ox during the season when the Sharks come over. Exactly. Obviously. So, no, it's good. It's going to be good. Good to see him. I haven't seen him in a while now. I saw him last, this season when we played him. Oh, nice. And Cam will be up for that game as well. Okay. Good. Really good. But, but he's a Sharks fan. No, it's fine, mate. We can always just tie him up and put a gun and keep him <laughs> Send him out. Send him out. There we go. Um, what is your dream holiday or like destination? I had this question the week as well. Like, obviously for me, I I, I, I love a. Eh? People keep stealing my questions. That's all right. Like <laughs> I, I do love a good like a uh, beach holiday. I do like island vibes, something like that. I'd love to go to the Philippines, honestly. Ooh. But like, yeah. And if there's something on my bucket list, I'd love to see the um, uh, the wildebeest migration up in Tanzania. That's like, mate, uh, that's something on my bucket list. And like, you can make a holiday from it, like Zanzibar is near there as well. So might as well fly over to Zanzibar afterwards. And you get best of both worlds, basically. Bit of bushveld, see some wild animals, good safari. And then you fly over to Zanzibar, have a cup of cocktails in the sun, good swim, 
good seafood, head back to the cold Scotland. Yeah, yeah, it's always cold when you come back here. <laughs> yeah, it is. Oh, like I have to be fair, like the summers in, in Scotland really surprised me. Like, mm. I, mate, I have to be honest, like when I moved to, to Leicester the first year, I just thought like there's no way it could be warm in this country. Like I've always been there when it's when it's winter, and like yeah. I didn't really pack like shorts or anything. I, I brought a couple of shorts, but my first winter moving from from Leicester to Edinburgh, and I got in was like just beautiful. There's just sunshine. I was like, man, this can't be the Edinburgh I know. Like this isn't Edinburgh, and it's just green and, and beautiful, and people are just out and about, uh, Portobello and like not very. And I was like, no, nah, man, this can't be. And like honestly. I had to buy a couple of shorts. So, like, so summers in, in Edinburgh, like, I have to be honest, like, I can't complain. The summer in Edinburgh, working the entire summer, but in the afternoon, drove to Portobello, had a good mm-hmm. swim, had a, had a couple of barbecues on the on the beach. So, mate, can't complain. Really, it's good. I mean, I wear shorts, I wear shorts all year round. I wear, I wear shorts in the snow. So. Man, I, I currently have shorts on, so... Yeah. I can't. Right, yeah. There you go. There's my knee. That's the best I could. That's the best I could show. Yeah, I can't get tables in the way. <laughs> um, one thing that you wish you could do more often. Oh, this is probably a really controversial one, and there would probably be some guys saying some bad stuff or rude stuff. Um, I'd probably try to go hunt more if I can, either over here or back home. Yeah. Um, I'm a really, I'm really fond of hunting and and just I'm really fond of nature actually. Okay. So just to be out in the farm, big big fire, um, good South African braai, meat, brandy, um, out in the, uh, in the in the in the in the bush and just shooting animals. And yet again, like not going into much detail about that, like, but there's a place for that as well. There's a reason yeah, I can do it. Of course, yeah. Yeah, so like I'm guessing without again without going into too much, I'm guessing like. Like deers, rabbits, nothing like, not like a rhino. Or, or no, 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 no. Like I do get white people like those. A couple of years ago, it was all over the news, the cage hunting with the lions and stuff. Like that stuff doesn't happen anymore. And then the reasons why most people, especially on game farms or safari parks, they hunt the animals nowadays is they just get too old. Like you, you kind of let nature take its course as well. But like, if you are a guy for farm and you have a couple of rhinos and the one rhino is really struggling, he's old and there's not much you can do for him, basically. You'd rather, remember, I think South African con- um, conservation get most of their money from hunting and hunting licenses and firearms and all that stuff. So there's like, and yet again, that money pays for saving rhinos, saving lions, all that stuff. So when they really like, done out and remember a lion if he's too old to hunt he just he just leaves the, the pride on it and he just goes on his own and he just walks away and he just dies basically and he's, he's basically starving himself till he dies because yeah. he can't hunt anymore he's too old so rather just take somebody's money for that have him shoot him put him down and still it's humane he's shot he's dead he's done and that guy has a good photo and if he wants the hide, you can do the hide for him as well. But that lion's money is going to pay for something else to be done on the farm or on the on the park, whatever. Mm. Oh, so no, but like mainly it's going no. to be deer and antelope. That's because you eat that and it's good food, it's healthy food, it's clean food, yeah. no chemicals or no hormones, nothing weird. Okay. No, the reason I ask is because I know that like I get if it's done like within like that within the nose it's all it's yeah. all good I meant like going out just out in the wild yeah bang no, no don't do that <laughs> no man like um, like you do get people trophy hunters or whatever they just yeah yeah that's what, that's what that's yeah. what I mean don't, yeah. don't do a trophy hunter now obviously you always go for the for the bit older one the bigger one um, but never have I wasted meat never in my life like I always take the, the meat it goes to the butcher he does everything I need him to do for me yeah and like I have meat all year round, and it's like I said, it's clean, it's healthy, no chemicals, and it's lean as well. So and it's really yeah, so delicious. You, so you hunt, you hunt for food. You don't hunt for fun. Nah, nah. but it might be it, fun yet, doing it. But. Yes, that's the thing. It might be fun doing it as well, and and yes, it is fun. But it's more, yeah, like like we said, not going into much detail. Like you have to keep the number, guess, number, numbers. Yeah, yeah. So basically, it's like fashion. Basically, keep the numbers down, 
because otherwise there's too many of one species that pushes other species out. So it's same to keep everything in balance. Exactly that. There we go. We'll, 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 we'll move on from there. Do you have, well, you kind of already answered it, but do you have any hobbies away from rugby at all? I um, do like a bit of fishing. I'm not really good at fly fishing. I can't fly fish for my life. I think I haven't tried enough. If I think if I try enough, I'll probably get it. But I'd still love to go fishing up in Scotland somewhere. Um, I, I'd love to do that. Back home, we used to fish it a bit, um, especially down a bit more north. You get like little bears or a lot of bears dams. So you can always go to da- um, get some bears. And then life cooking, mate. Honestly, one of my big passions. Like get on, put on some good music, um, bottle of good red wine and just cook away. So what's your go-to meal? If you, if, if you invite me over for dinner, what, what are you cooking? Oh, probably I'd rather go on what I'm in the mood for, but I can do a good pasta. I can, like, honestly, I love I love cooking. Like, I can do anything. I'm really good in the, on the barbecue as well. So I'll, I'll get you a, a braai, good steak. I'll make a mean chimichurri. And then good steak, uh, probably do you, like, a garlic potato, something like that. Mm. Um, nice salad. And then mm, but, uh, asparagus with garlic, butter. Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming over for the summer. For <laughs> Easy. Sounds good. <laughs> we'll, we'll get Shuey, we'll get... We'll get yeah, um, you can have all the boys. We'll get all the boys. I'm not yeah. South African, but I'll, I'll blend in this thing. Mate, you'll fit in. If, so- if Sykesy fits in with the Sophos, you can fit in as well. <laughs> so- Sykesy loves to say he's, he's, he's off a Sophos, so he likes to... With like angry with himself, so he's always with the barbecues and and out and about with the boys as well. But he's a good bloke, so I don't mind. He's alright. Yeah, I like, I like Marshall. He had the last time I seen him, he had uh, the bowl of sweeties because his yeah, yeah partner has the the stall, and all I was meaning was to catch his attention. Like, why do you need that many sweets? But he didn't get that and grabbed a handful and went, "There you go, mate." I was like, "No, that, thank you, but that's not what yeah. I meant." But thanks. <laughs> no, he does love <laughs> the sweets. Yeah, he does. Do you have anything that you're currently binging on uh, Netflix, and what do you, or also what do you recommend? Um, I watched the Watcher of the kind of weird one. Um, yeah, I've heard yeah, it. Was quite weird. I've not heard good things about that. I've heard it's strange. Yeah, it's a bit strange. It was a bit creepy as well, but it was good. I did enjoy it. Um, I actually finished this weekend. Man, I lost myself. The GC on, I think, BBC iPlayer, they had the new SAS, I think, Rogue Heroes, something like okay. that. But really, really great. It's a, it's a, it's a must-watch, like, really good. A bit violent and a bit foul language, but really, like, for me, that likes the history and the war and all the stuff. It's, it just yeah. goes on about, like, how the SAS was formed. And they actually put in real-life video clips from how they formed them, training, and... It's not obviously it's not a documentary, but yeah, they just put that in as well in between, and it's really good oh. to see. It's like it's a good watch. Six six episodes in the first season, and I think I finished all of them. There you go. It's been easy. What um, that's what might get you in trouble. Depends. <laughs> Depends on who yeah. the Bloom Fontaine, Blythe Star, or Edinburgh. Oh, Mike. Currently, with the traffic in Blue, um, in Edinburgh and all the roadworks. I'd probably say Ben Fontaine. But yeah. like it's it's a good lifestyle. Like for me, liking the outdoors and shooting guns and hunting, it's it's really like it's, it's almost like a farming community. Yeah. So it's not it's, it's not small, but it's it's not too big. It's not a big city. So traffic is like not that bad, man. Like if you just like get stuck in traffic, it's probably gonna be 10, 15 minutes and you're done. Yeah. But but I have to be honest, like, I do love my country and I'm coming over and just seeing a first world country and experiencing different things. Like, and I always tell people back home when they ask me this question as well, like, the grass is probably greener on the other side because the shit is more. Um, like, you do get taxes and you get council tax and, and you get, you pay for everything as well. But yet again, everything works. Like, I can yeah. get on a bus, I can get on a tram, I can get on a train and I can be down in London for five hours. Like, yeah. It's just, it's, it's a different world. Like, you can't really compare the two. Like, both are beautiful. Um, but, yeah, well, I do enjoy the last time in the UK. So, what is your favourite thing about Edinburgh? 
made like I've been coming here since and I said in my, in my interview when I signed to the club as well like I've always wanted to play in Edinburgh like I never knew the club much about the club and honestly grew really fond of, of the Gunners and, and the brand of rock we play and, and the club itself like I do love the place now yeah. but I've always been really fond of Edinburgh like I've been a couple of places in my life in, in, in the world and 2016, when, when we played our first game here against Glasgow, actually, we stayed in the Royal Mall. Because we had, I'm not sure if you know him, Rory Duncan was our head coach. Okay. And I think he used to play for Watsons. Uh, I think so, I yeah. I think so. Might be. But like, um, he was the head coach and he just said, nah, Glasgow, he's going to stay in Edinburgh, we'll travel to Glasgow for the game. It's like, okay, yeah. fair play. And it was just, I just fell in love with this place and I love it ever since. Like, Every year was the highlight of my trip was or my tour was to come to Edinburgh and we'd probably be based here for two weeks and I just loved it. And every time I still go into town, like the castle is just it's like you just stand and stare, stare at it like dumbstruck and you're like, it's like how? Oh, like honestly how? Oh. And I must be honest, I think that entire like the Royal Mall, like how busy it is, the castle leading up to it, the pubs on the side, the shops on the side, and yeah. just all the food on the side. It's just like I don't know, like, it always gets me. Yes, I mean, I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd probably go into, into town and, and I'll make a pit stop because I love ice cream. Um, man, I'll show you two really good spots. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to name names. Yeah, but, you can. Go for it. Um, the one is like Mary's Milk Bar. So they normally open, they in Grass Market. So they are normally open from Wednesday to Saturday, Sundays. So okay. I think so. Yeah, and then Monday and Tuesday they're closed. And then if they are closed, I'd probably go to London, just up the road near um, near the museum. So I'd probably go oh, there yeah, as well. Yeah. But they do like this little waffle cone and you can fill it with chocolate sauce and they pour it out and then they scoop your ice cream on top of it. Yes. So I'm the, I'm the stupid bloke from down south that eats ice cream in the winter as well. And it's just, I love it. That's wrong with that. <clears throat> yeah, so I'd probably, yeah. I'd park my car near grass market somewhere and I'd get yeah. ice cream and I'd walk up to the Royal Mall, up to the castle. Matt, I think every time I've been in town, I'd walk up to the castle and just stand about, look at the people, look at the castle, look at the view and just stroll down. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. It's a nice, it's a nice walk. It's a historical walk as well. So Yeah. So that's like, I know, like it sounds cheesy, but like, shit, man, I do enjoy it. Like, honestly, it's a really, it's a good experience. Like you never get used to Driving past the course and I'm like, just watching it. Yeah. No, that's, I like that. That's a very good answer. Final question for you today, Warren. One thing you'd like to be remembered for? As a human or as an opera player? Anything you want. Oh. I'd say, for honest man. I yeah. say honest man, like, and that can go different, like different ways, like honest and I can say in the way you go about your work. Um, yeah, good days graft is is worth more, and just being straight up honest man. Like, if we don't see eye to eye, probably won't disrespect you, but we would like no, we don't see eye to eye, like, and that's normal. Like, people don't yeah. really get along or don't like agree. So, I'd rather be that guy than a people pleaser. Nothing wrong with that. I think I'm probably the same. I, I, I'll say, like, if I don't like you, I'll say I don't like you. Yeah. Might get me in it trouble. Is is. Okay. It is what it is. It's like if yeah. people are like, oh, I don't like you. Like, I do like I do other content videos with people like, well, I don't agree with this. Okay. And that's fine. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Mate, if everybody agreed, then the world would be a mess. Would it? If we all agreed, would it be a mess? Some, yeah, probably not. But how boring would it be there? It'd be boring. Yeah, it would be boring. Yeah. But it wouldn't be a mess. So we, it's a, it's a fine line to cross. Yeah, like I said, like let's not start in politics and, and all no, that. No, no, no. How to change, how to change the world and oh, goodness, it's no, not people that. for that. And... No, I like the fact that you, you're an honest man, and you definitely are. And the book is now closed. Learn, you've absolutely crushed it, and. Thank you. An absolute blast. I don't know why it's took me so long to get you on. Yeah, I don't know. Like I saw, like I've, I've seen on your on your Instagram, like you do the podcast and the shows and stuff, but like never really like saw the link to your page. And then when you followed me on the on the page, I was like, 
oh, this is it. Yeah. So like, yeah. Oh, well, it was, just, it was one of them because, like, I've spoke to you. God knows how many times now. I've lost yeah. count already. And it was just one of them that I never, I don't know why I never came across it. And I, it wasn't until last week where I was like, wait a minute, Lewin's a professional rugby player. <sighs> Granted, we don't talk about rugby when, we, when we're when weather, but... Yeah. So, Probably yeah. The, the, the racing beach face must be. I got that from my dad, like, it's just natural. I just always look angry and pissed off, but... You are, on. You are, you're more approachable than you, than you give yourself credit for, though. Yeah, I... But, True. But but, or, I'm just, or I'm just not scared and maybe stupid. We'll see. No, I'm not sure. I'll go either way. At least I'll take <laughs> it. Way. But yeah, Perfect. Uh, absolute blast having you on, mate. Thank you so much for Thank coming you. on and good luck for the rest of the season. Hope to see you smashing some bodies soon because we're back. You're back for... In two weeks on. December, yeah. Yeah, end of, no, end of November. I think 26 November we play in Treviso or Benetton Treviso oh. in London. All right, there yeah. you go. Basically. Next, next home game is not until December though. Against yeah, Monster. that's all right. Exactly. Stop. That's a big one. Oh, you, we'll win. We'll win. So, I said yeah. a down. We always win at the down. There you go. Mate, we have to. But listen, Murray, thank you for having me, mate. It was really No good. worries. No worries. This has been the final whistle with Lone De Bruyne and we will see you next time.